All right, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna go over what am I watching for the next week. I'll make my plan with you. I'll show you how to make a plan. And I'm watching four names. Now, first one is Spy, second is QQQs, third is Tesla, and fourth one is AMD. Now, I think they can make a big move this coming week. Now, the past week was a little bit tough. Now, we had earnings, we had FOMC. Man, it was a very tough week. It was a very tough week to trade. The trends picked up, but trends picked up when most of the traders walked away, like the retail traders walked away. Most of the time, retail traders are only trading for first hour or so, hour and a half or so. Like me personally, I'm trading hour and a half or so. And the trend picked up like two or three hours into the market. So I missed most of the trend. And I only made about maybe $700 in total the past week. Now I had three red days, two green days, which kind of, you know, uh, but it turned out to be green week. Um, but next week, hopefully the price action is a little bit better and um, let's make a plan so, you know, hey, we set ourselves up for success. Let's go. Okay, now, first things first, this is the economic calendar um, of what's happening this coming week. We have 9.45, we have PMI numbers coming out on Monday, so that means Monday we gotta be careful. Now, personally, me as a trader, I only, only care about the events that are happening during the market hours. I do not care about the events that are happening um, before the market hours, let's say 8.30. I don't care because I have enough time to kind of make a new plan, make a new, you know, um, kind of adjust my plan according to the news. You see what I'm saying? But the news that is actually coming out while the market is open, they can influence the prices to go up or down on SPY, QQQs, the market can move. And I really, really want to pay attention to what's happening around there. The only reason, the big reason is if you're in SPY calls and there's a news coming out and the news came out to be negative, okay, and the market started going down and you are in calls play. Now, you do not even have like three or four or five seconds to get out of a trade. Why? Because the price can literally move so fast you'll take a big loss. So I only care about the events that are happening during the market hours, which can influence the position that I'm in, okay? Now, Monday we have 9.45 and 10 o'clock, we have PMI numbers coming out. And after that, nothing really much. Um, Tuesday we have um, Fed speaker talking, but nothing really happening. So no stress. Um, Wednesday, after market open, 10.30, we have some oil numbers coming out. So when oil numbers are coming out, you want to really, like they can influence the airline sector. Like if you're trading Boeing, you want to be careful of this stuff because the oil numbers are very, very related. Like they're directly proportional to what can happen on the stock. If the numbers came out negative, um, the st it can you know affect the stock price a little bit. You see what I'm saying? <coughs> so we have this 10.30. That's about it. And then some Fed speakers talking later in the afternoon on Wednesday. So we have Monday, some news. Tuesday, no news. Wednesday, some news. Thursday, we have jobless numbers coming out 8.30, but that's before the market open. And after that, nothing really happening. So everything's chill. Um, okay, Thursday's good. Friday, nothing happening again. Beautiful. So only thing that's happening is Wednesday while the market is open, 10.30, the oil numbers coming out. Other than that, everything's pretty good. And uh, Monday, we have PMI numbers coming out and that's it. So let's go out there and try to make a plan on four names, SPY, QQQs, AMD, and Tesla. Now this is my SPY's chart, okay? This is the weekly chart and we'll go over weekly and daily, we'll switch between them, okay? Now the first thing first that I see on the weekly chart right here is a little trend line. Now I'm making a plan with you, okay? So just just stay patient. <laughs> There's a trend line running on the top. Now last, this is one, twice, three, four, five, sixth time we are approaching that trend line. Now let's look at what's happening actually on a daily chart, how it kind of looks. Oh, not that one. Um, one day, okay. How that kind of looks? Okay, looking good, looking good. Couple touches here. All right, now that level is roughly around 499.5-ish. Okay, now if that happens during this week, we gotta be careful of this, like we have to be. Okay, this is one. The other one kind of maybe, maybe at the bottom, a trend line at the bottom, what, we have three touches? Yes, we have three touches. So three touches on a trend line it actually makes a trend line for me, okay? So on the top, we have multiple touches, one, two, three, four, five five touches already this one 
second one is right here let me zoom in so you see better second one's right here third one kind of almost here but you know um almost there man you can't really have a perfect setup right <clears throat> what does that mean that simply means this right now it's in a very very critical spot that means it can like most probably it can just like stay around here and then finally break to the upside or downside depending on what's the news and what's happening on the bigger picture so we gotta be careful now that we know that it's in a tight range now tight range is actually not a tight range if you think about it the tight range goes from 499 down to 486 that's a 14 dollar move you see what i'm saying that's a decent 10 dollar move at least for us to kind of catch towards the upside or downside but you gotta be careful of these trend lines okay now this is what um, the bigger picture trend line that look like now this is all-time highs so we cannot really go out there and be like oh my god i know we're gonna stop but it gives us a good idea if the price breaks this 496.05 ish all right 496.05 which is higher like all-time high right now the next one could be like every one dollar move just make it easy for spy every one dollar move super easy okay so that would be 497 then 498 then you want to pay attention to 499 and then 500 is massive like it's massive because of the whole number okay it's just a big critical level 500 and it's if it's approaching man it's you gotta be very 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 careful only reason is prices can reject heavy okay um, I don't think the first time you're going to break, you're going to just break smoothly. Let's go back and look at what happened when the first time we tried to break 400. So the very first time we tried to break 400 was roughly around here. All right, roughly around here. What happened when we tried to break 400? We were approaching 400, got rejected down to 384, 85. And then one day, next day, we gapped up. This is a f um, we actually gapped up above 400. Look at this, and it pushed. Makes sense. And next time we will, you know, 400 being a critical level. Let's see where the 400 level lies. 400, a lot of price action, kind of almost hugging it. Sometimes breaking towards the upside, breaking towards downside, stuff like that. So first time when it's approaching 500, even bigger level than 400, just 500, such a huge level. You gotta be careful. Every one dollar move to the upside we are watching, but towards the downside. Now we have some data towards the downside. We don't have enough data towards the upside, but we have some stuff for the downside. Let's look at what's happening. The first thing first, man, I will make this a level. The reason is simple. Prices came up there, got rejected. Next, again, rejected. Finally, it broke above. Nope, couldn't hold. And then finally, it actually on Friday, literally went past. So this is a critical level, 488 or 489, let's say, for argument's sake, okay, 490, 489. Um, below that, roughly around, maybe roughly around here, the reason is, look at this, got rejected, again, finally broke above, it kind of opened, gapped up, came back, and this way it found a new support because of previous resistance, again, so this is a critical level, 45. Now, if it breaks below 45 or 49, it can head towards this trend line. If a trend line breaks, man, I'll be looking for like maybe a retest of a trend line and then shoot towards the downside, like stuff like this. Now, there has to be a news for this. This is very bullish. Markets in the uptrend as long as it's an uptrend. So we got to trade the upside as long as it's an uptrend. You see what I'm saying? So... This level and then next one would be roughly around here. The reason is uh, prices had a little hard time breaking this, but when, um, like on this day, couldn't break. Next day, gapped up and stayed, made this as a new resistance again. So that would be the next level. But upside, we have decent levels towards the downside. I'll be paying attention. This is kind of a level as well because a couple days we, um, you know, that was a resistance. It could become a new support and prices can shoot up. All right, that's what I'm watching on SPY. Now let's look at QQQs. All right, so for QQQs, I'll be paying attention to, <coughs> again, same stuff. There's a trend line forming on the weekly chart. Let's look at the weekly chart. If we can find a decent trend line. If on SPY it's forming a trend line, um, let's see if there's actually a trend line forming here as well. Okay, that's one. Not really too far away. That's two, 
too far away. But let's look at the daily for a minute. Now we have the daily. Um, can we adjust this a little bit? Okay, that's a little bit too far out. It's too far out. It's 430, 460. So there's no point of having us having that um, in our charts right now. Um, the one that I see recently from last October-ish could be maybe this. Boom. All right, look at this. We found a trend line. First touch here. Second, third, fourth, fifth. Five touches already on this. See if we get a little downside as well. For the downside. Oh, yeah. Nice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm a little bit further away, but say, let's say six touches. Now, again, similar setup like QQQs, right? Um, like SPY. But SPY is actually making a new highs. If you look at SPY, SPY is actually making a new highs right now. But QQQs is not able to make new highs. So what does that tell us? That means that the tech sector in general is a little bit slow. All right. Now we know. But this 430 being a 430 level, we got to, you know, watch that 430.24 being the high. Let's watch 430.24. Okay, it's just all time highs. Right now, the high of this candle was 430.24. Uh, Above this, it could be every $1 move again. 431, 432. Um, now, 432, then 433, 434. You got this, okay? But this trend line, if it's touching this trend line, uh, roughly around this 435 area, I'll be a little bit careful. But we have some data towards the downside. Not much for the upside because it's all time high. But let's see if we can find decent levels for the downside. The first level being roughly around here. The reason? Prices tried to break, couldn't break. Again, this is a strong resistance. Finally broke above. Sweet. And now let's see if it becomes a new resistance. But this is also a kind of a level. Tried to break, couldn't, couldn't. Finally gapped above. Found a new support level right here. Broke below, but gapped about, um, on this level pretty much. Shoot up. That roughly around this level is critical level than this. Now, what can happen here is towards the upside, every $1 move we are watching. But towards the downside, I, I want to pay attention to this 428 if it holds. If it couldn't hold, we can head down to 424, 25 ish area. If that can't hold, 421 and then 418. Okay, this is what I think that I'll be paying attention to this week very, very, very closely. Okay, the next name that I'm watching is AMD. Now let's look at AMD, what's happening on AMD, the reason why I'm watching it, and the stuff that you gotta be a little bit careful about. Now, the reason why I'm watching AMD, if you go on a weekly chart, it kind of is a very bullish pin bar candle. Now what is a pin bar candle? So this is what a pin bar candle is, all right? So it kind of, let's say it opened, this candle opened right here, okay? That's why it's a red candle, it opened here. The sellers took over, they pushed the price down here, but the buyers are like, uh-oh, what are you doing? Let's push it back up. And the buyers were able to close roughly around here. Now, I know sellers took over most of this candle, but the latest buyer, latest move that actually who won were the buyers. You see what I'm saying? Now, we can confirm this on a daily as well. So first, the sellers took over, but the last three days, the buyers took over. So we got to be careful. You see what I'm saying? That's why I like to watch these bullish pin bar candles because the latest move, the buyers were in control. But earlier in the week, the sellers were in control. So we got to pay attention to the latest stuff. Why? Because, hey, if the buyers are strong enough to push through this weekday and they still are buying, I think can, they can still keep buying. And if they still keep buying, we got to be careful. All right, we got to be careful so we can actually catch the move. Now, what am I watching here? The good setup about this that I kind of like is... Let's see if there's actually first a trend line. If there's a trend line forming, there would be even, even sweet. Okay, I love trend lines on a daily chart, by the way. You can tell. Okay, that's one trend line. It's quite further away, so there's no point of us having that. Like, it's a decent trend line. One, two, three, four. But that's no point of us having this trend line right now on our charts. So we'll get rid of it. Any upside trend line forming? Um, no. So, okay. No trend lines forming. But what's happening right around this area let's look at could be a flag forming the day we capped above the flag and we pushed all right sweet that's cool 
let's look at what is actually happening 180 level being a critical level so what we'll do is we'll kind of zoom in a little bit we'll go on a six ship in a chart we're zooming in we're getting more candles now okay now what we see is 180 being a very very critical level it's 12 o'clock right 180 is a critical level so we gotta watch 180 why last time i tried to break 180 couldn't 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 now this area 179 ish has been held in the past quite nicely as well look at this okay 179 180 being a critical level but once it breaks this let's go back on a daily once it breaks this i personally believe we can head up to this 181.3 level which came from um this day jan 26th okay 181 point two wish above this now there's not much data for us to kind of acquire from this candle right we can put it at the top yeah we can kind of put at the open price yeah but there's not actually a lot of data we will be kind of guessing the um the stuff so what i want you to do is go on a 60 minute chart and try to see if we find a little bit zoomed in version okay not much yeah you can kind of drop a level here but you can't see really what's happening here why the price goes up and down so much so zoom in even more go on a 15 minute chart so you can find a better picture what's happening here now when we zoomed in a little bit more we found out that this area was actually a critical area look at this price is broken the pre-market that became literally that became a new support but finally as soon as the market opened it broke below that became a resistance a strong resistance but when it broke above right here it broke above but sellers came with a lot of force as soon as this take, took over sellers took over as well and they pushed the price down now we have this 183.5 ish level a critical level another one would be roughly around let's say this 184.5 ish the reason a lot of times um all right look at this a lot of times every time we touch in roughly this zone it's getting sellers getting triggered okay so we gotta watch this little zone now instead of having this dirty zone looking on our charts what i want you to do is do yourself a favor grab a line and just drop a line roughly there and every single line you always got to treat it like a zone anywhere it's never actually a perfect line it's always a zone because i'm drawing this line here maybe while you're doing your setup even while you're watching this video you might be putting this 184.32 or somebody else on the other side of the world might be watching 184.35 now they are buying or selling around that area so you gotta be careful you see what i'm saying that's why one level actually is never a line it's always a zone all right now now that we know go back on actually the daily chart now that we know we have some levels now we know if the prices break above this 179 head towards 180 you can break this 181 we have a big move coming 183.5 but make sure we take profit around that area if that gets taken over this 184.3 area is a critical level as well but anything setting up towards the downside i don't really see it right now up until this 162 breaks which is quite further away so let's just watch the upside for this week for amd especially unless it breaks this 180 2.5 ish move towards probably 160 158 okay now this is done let's look at the last name that i'm watching which is tesla now I like this i like tesla a lot the reason why i like tesla is i'll give you a quick little explanation it's for it's making a lit pro a beautiful setup it's making a bullish divergence right now go add rsi on your charts all right go add rsi when you go at rsi on a daily chart you see right now is price made a look at this price made a low right here and it made a low sweet but price nearly made a low it was only what like two dollars apart i know you might be like bro but that's too wide i get it man i get it but watch this it might be setting up for a it's oversold right now okay it's oversold it can push up um, but it might be setting up a strong 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 bullish um divergence which means the prices can literally take off now are we gonna just enter our trade based on just this of course not like we're still gonna look for reasons to jump in but that could be one reason of the bigger move happening now that we know this i'm also watching for the downside though that doesn't mean i'm you know i'll be biased i'll also be watching for the downside what we'll do is we'll go on a 60 minute chart kind of look for the downside first 
let's see if there's a tr strong trend line okay what we had here is we had one two look at this let me zoom in what I, what's happening here one two two touches already three touch here so that means the trend line is actually solid trend line there we're going to be watching this trend line if this trend line breaks we can move towards the downside now let's get back to the daily now if this trend line breaks or if this 182 level breaks okay 182 level breaks towards the downside the next level can be 180 okay i'll be paying attention to this so 180 breaks man we laughing we're going down every one dollar move every two dollar move like 178 176 175 i'll be paying attention to this stuff you see what i'm saying 175 just 175 is a little little i like the number okay now this is done now what about the upside though is there any setup setting up for the upside yeah but before that let me show you the weekly chart so we kind of are not biased at all this is a bearish pin bar what's happening here so this particular candle looks like this okay yeah but upper wick is way longer than the lower one what's happening here is basically so it's a green candle that means it opened here it went down a little bit bias took over they pushed the price all the way to the high but then the sellers are like uh oh what are you doing push down it closed like this the v the weekly candle closed like this now of course the buyers had the most control but the latest control that we had was of the sellers okay now if sellers are like uh oh we want to push the price even down it can happen you see what i'm saying like look at this now what do we want to see here if your 182 breaks 180 uh, 178 176 175 can happen but towards the upside i will pay attention to probably above this 190 area 190 breaks towards the upside um, we are probably looking at now i can't really find a level so let's go on a 60 minute chart try to look for an actual level maybe i'll be looking at this 194 ish now 194 is quite far yeah that's a four dollar move so let's zoom in a little bit more what's happening roughly here if we can find a better level which is 15 minutes now on a 15 minute what we see here is roughly around this process has been getting rejected a lot look at this it came up here even zoom out a little bit came up here got rejected found a new support right here then again resistance 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 broke above but sellers took over again resistance resistance uh, 191.5 is a critical level then after that let's go back on a maybe uh, maybe actually run here hey look at this such a strong level 192.4 now look at this if we were not actually on a 15 minute chart we will never be able to find these levels so very very critical you see what i'm saying i know this video has gone long but i just want to give so much value in this video man so you actually know next time how to actually make the levels you see what I'm saying? All right. <clears throat> this is the stuff I'll be watching for the upside. This stuff I'll be watching for the downside. Now, I do a. Hey, I do apologize. This I didn't plan to make this video 20, 25 minutes long. But I hope you got some value out of this. Um, if you do, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite setup. And hey, good fucking luck for the next week. Let's go. Let's make some money. Peace.